All right. So, lots of news came out over the past couple days about TFT. Um, I'm going to go through it, like, in reverse order because I feel like going from least important to most important. So, to start off, I'm going to quickly talk about patch 11.1. Um, that is dropping tomorrow, which, when I post this video, will be today. So, uh, not a lot of big changes, but uh, definitely some noteworthy stuff. Uh, first, the big system change. This is probably the biggest thing on the patch. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is this actually has me pretty hyped. Cycling through boards with hotkeys now skips dead players on PC. This is the best thing to come out in like the past two months on TFT. So, I, if you ever watch me play, I use one and three to scroll through all the players, but you have to go through all the dead boards all the time. Now, you skip the dead boards. This is a really good patch. Uh, props to Riot for getting this one in. Because I, I actually imagine this probably wasn't really that easy. Or really that 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 probably doesn't feel worthy of their time or effort. But this is a this is a big change to the game that makes me makes me happy. Champion changes. Uh, sharpshooter, a bit too strong in the mid game. Um, so where you should read this as is that Timu, uh, Timu and Vayne were really strong. Particularly Vayne 3 and Timo 2. So, Vein 3 gets a slight nerf. Um, this nerf probably will not be noticed if you were playing Sharpshooter 2. But if you're playing Sharpshooter 4, you're probably going to actually feel this one. I, I don't think you'll feel it if you're playing Sharpshooter 2. So, Vein, Vein will still be good. But, not like just playing Vein will be fine. But, the Sharpshooter 4 Vein is not going to be nearly as fine. At least in my opinion. Uh, tier 2 changes. So we'll, we'll jump to Teemo first. Uh, first, Teemo's chosen stat is going from man to spell power. This is meant to fix the issue with him um, mana determining... Uh, mana working with spirit. So if he was a mana chosen, his mana cost went down. Which decreased the capabilities of spirit. Which was awkward. So now his chosen stat is spell power. At the same time, they nerfed the two-star damage down to 450. Um, I, to be honest, this is probably going to feel more as a buff to people. Uh, I don't think outside of chosen Teemo, a lot of people play Teemo. Not that they probably should, because Teemo is really strong. But usually, when you play Teemo, it's because you picked up a chosen Teemo and you're just like, "Lol, like I chosen Teemo. This thing's busted." So I, I honestly think this is probably more of a buff than a nerf because he's going to have the increased spell power. That's just kind of my opinion on this. Um, most people probably will not feel this outside of the fact that the mana dropped. The, the mana drop just means that he's not going to CC the entire board in the early game. All the time. Just most of the time. Uh, other two cost changes. So, Elderwood. Um, Elderwood. Um, so, the Elderwood buffs that were given in the last patch update were really strong elderwood particularly elderwood 3 became a lot better particularly in the late game where you could just carry two elderwoods and then throw an elderwood spat and elderwood would be like really strong so there were a handful of changes that came down on some of the elderwoods uh, there's not much to say about hecarim he's giving him a last chance to be really strong in late game so, three star gets buff. Uh, now, Lulu is a lot more worth talking about. Um, how, how do I want to say this? So, Lulu was kind of jank. Uh, this patch, Lulu, was way too strong. Particularly in overtime, Lulu was way too strong. Uh, so, Lulu basically took an axe to the head. Uh, this is a big nerf to Lulu, like a really big. There is not much in the game that has a 150 mana cost. Like, it just isn't. So, like, Chosen Lulu was one of the strongest openers in the game. Like, you would just sail through the mid game into the late game, go level 9, and put sell to the Chosen, get your level 9 board a bunch of 5 cost, and just kind of laugh that you just rode a Chosen Lulu to victory. I still think 
Lulu will be strong, but this is a really big nerf, so I'm not quite sure exactly how strong she's going to be anymore. Probably still worth playing, but I doubt you're just going to get straight up carried by the fact that you have a Lulu. Tier 3 changes. So, Kalista's getting an extra 100 HP. I actually really like this change. Um, Kalista has been underperforming for a lot of people. Um, Kalista's a really cool champion. Just ran, it, it, The logic that Riot has given on this, I actually think is really smart. The reason why Kalista is performing really poorly is because she's getting blown out in combat before she can do anything. So, the logic to increase this was to give her more health. Um, this makes sense to me when Vigar was kind of one-shotting everything. This is a very low health pool. Vigar will just instantly pick this off right at the start of combat, and you're just like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess I just lost my carry, because Vigar just targeted it, and it's dead. <sighs> sad face. So... I really like this change. I don't think it's going to make a significant... It, it'll increase her performance, but it won't increase her effectiveness, if that makes sense. Um, I still don't think a lot of people are going to play around with Callista, but you should, because Callista's really fun in Duelist as a backup carry. Um, Vigar, Vigar needed a nerf. Um, we'll talk later about Vigar, because they kind of gut him in the PBE for, um, for set 4.5. But, I mean, this was kind of needed. Um, you give him a blue buff and another tier item, and he just insta-casts and blows up your board. Instantly takes out two things. Like, you're basically playing from two levels down. And it's laughably strong. Now, that said, Vigar is supposed to be a carry. He is supposed to be strong. But I think his ability to just instantly whack off things on your board right at the start of combat was kind of getting out of control. So they're toning down his mana from 45 to 55, which I think is good, but it is probably going to need a bigger hit more in line with what they have on the PBE. But maybe not as much as what they have on the PBE. And we'll talk about that. Tier 4. Uh, a bunch of Tier 4 changes, actually. Um... Aatrox is becoming an actual tank. So, fun story about Aatrox. So, I've actually made Aatrox 3. Aatrox 3 is really cool. Really fun to watch. Looks awesome. Completely worthless. <laughs> Does nothing. Um, so, if you haven't... since I, I doubt people actually know this. If you 3-star Aatrox, he actually gets 5 chains instead of 2. So, he'll pull 5 things in close and then alt. And you would think that does a ton of damage, but it doesn't, because it doesn't have enough AoE to hit all five of those enemies. <laughs> so it's it's more hilarious than anything else. But um, Aatrox kind of, like, it's it's also not uncommon for Aatrox to get murdered down before he ults. He has a pretty, pretty high mana cost to his ult. Um, so uh, giving him an extra 100 health and 30 armor is going to go a long ways to making Aatrox a lot better. Uh, particularly in the late game, um, being able to pair him with Sejuani and getting both of those to combo off each off each other. Ari, um, Ari is the weakest performing four cost. I really don't care that they buffed Ari because I don't like how Ari functions in the game right now. Which again we'll get to in the PBE because Ari isn't in the PBE. Um, all, all this does is buff the um, Vanguard Vanguard Ari build Vanguard Mystic. It, it doesn't really change anything else. You get the alt more. Yay. You, you still build the same stuff. You still do the same thing. It's probably still a mediocre build. Jin. Um, so Jin's ad multiplier at two star is going down. Um, so one of the things that happens pretty commonly with Jin, and this has been actually discussed quite a bit among high level players, is that you can play a really weak ass board and have a Jin two star. And it just kind of mows down. And you, you don't even, like, really notice it. It just kind of mows down the board and nothing targets... If nothing targets him, he just... Everything dies. And it's like, why did this happen? Well, it's just kind of the way the bonus damage on Jin works. If, if he four shots, it doesn't matter how many sharpshooters you have. Everything touched by that four shot dies. And it's kind of laughable. Um, so they're nerfing the bonus damage. You get it two star on Jin. Um... 
my only issue with this is that this probably you're probably not going to see a lot of difference between one star and two star gin in terms of damage anymore. So you should take that into account when you roll down in deciding whether or not you really need that two star gin or whether you don't need it and you should just go to nine. That's probably the only thing I would say about gin. Just how is it really worth it to go to two star anymore? It might be just because of the fact your build is also really weak now. Uh, Morgana, um, so this is kind of more of a rework to Morgana to prep her for what she's going to be in set 4.5. So they're increasing Morgana's health, increasing her armor, but reducing her range to two hexes. Um, it, it's, it, it just means how you have to position her a little differently now. You can't put her in the back row because the two hex won't reach anything. So you're going to have to put her closer to the front line. Or backline everything and let your opponent's front line walk up to you. Uh, Lee Sin armor and magic resist goes from 50 to 60. Lee Sin is such a weird champion in the game. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really think there's even a difference between 1 star and 2 star Lee Sin. There, I, I just don't think there is. You normally just throw in a Lee Sin to pray that you knock out a champion instantly. Just get a free champion kill off just having Lee Sin. And maybe he has upside after that. Getting a two-star Lee Sin doesn't do anything. He just has extra health and maybe he knocks off two champions instead. Um, but by giving him this extra armor and magic resist, maybe he survives long enough that that one-star Lee Sin knocks more things off. This doesn't change two-star Lee Sin. This just makes one-star Lee Sin a little better to just kind of chug into your comp to try to get a free kill. Bug fixes. Now for where the real work is on this game. Um, so there, there was an issue with Azir, Azir's slow. So the slow effect on Azir was causing a CC that would prevent casting animations. So like Ari is a good example of this. Katarina is a good example of this, where if the slow effect was on them as they tried to all, it would be considered CC and would have the effects of that just kind of happen. So, like, Katarina would stop spinning. Katarina would, like, say, hey, I'm going to alt now. Oh, I'm CC'd. I'm done alting. Or um, Ari would say, hey, I'm alting. Time to build up that spirit. Oh, I'm done charging. Time to launch the spirit bomb. Uh, I actually had, have seen this maybe once or twice. Uh, it is a pretty big change to um, making Katarina function sometimes. If you decided not to have a Quicksilver on Katarina, and you're like, grumble, grumble. Set show shopper now properly fails when blocked by trap claw instead of still doing AoE. So if, if Set hit a trap claw, he no longer deals the AoE damage. The ult just fails, which is how it should function. Now this is a this one I think is actually a really big fix for Set. Set is no longer interrupted during show shopper to go do sit up. So it's very common for Set to do his grab animation, go up into the air, and then take enough damage to say, oh, I'm going to put you down very politely and then run back in my corner and do sit-ups. He's not going to do that anymore. He's going to finish the animation, then run back to his corner and do his sit-ups. Big change. Really big change to set, because it means he's far more likely to get that first start alt off that he just didn't get off before. Um, so, the, yeah, I, I really think this is a big change that a lot of people are going to overlook. Um, more set changes. Stop attacking when cat is interrupted by state change. So, like, basically, if he grabs something that was going in the GA state, he still does the animation for the um for the secondary damage. Uh, bug fix fortune. <laughs> oh, this one fix the bug where Yone was shredding more armor and magic resist than intended. So, Yone was supposed to be shredding sixty percent armor. And magic resist. He's been shredding 80 this whole time. Which is why everyone just stares at Yone and is like, unit is busted. Um. <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't help but laugh at that. Um It's it's been proposed by Mort Dog that Yone's probably gonna get a rework and that they're probably gonna focus on one of his two alts rather than having both of these alts. Because, like, in combination with one another and having a gunblade and blue buff, Yone just murders down 1v9s the entire team very, very easily. So, I would look 
in like maybe even before set 4.5 launches yone gets a rework because he's he's become that obnoxious in the game now with his mr shred with his uh, armor and mr shred and then following up with an instant kill and recipe hint fixes um there's not much to say about this patch this is supposed to be kind of just a minor patch to lead us into 4.5 um so there, there really is not that much to say outside of the fact the the biggest thing is that this um, the Vigar and Lulu hits. If you're playing like low plat and below, this is probably the best change that ever happened in your life because I know that particularly at that Elo, like Vigar and Lulu were basically considered busted and were run by like five of eight players in every lobby, and it was probably out of control for you guys. Meanwhile, I'm, like, in mid-diamond, and there's maybe one or two people playing it. Um, it's it's good, it's just not busted the way it is at those lower elos where people either don't know how to properly itemize, don't know how to contest, or don't know, how, don't know what other better boards are. Um, so, I, I, this is probably the biggest change on this patch to you. So... That's all I've got for 11.1. There's not much else to say here. Um, I it's not going to table flip the meta. It's going to basically just change how a few people play the mid game, and that's about it. That's all I got, guys. Uh, I'm going to stop this video and go on to some other discussions. Peace.